Hosea chapter 9. Rejoice not. There you go. That's the... That's not the theme song of the of the church. Say, rejoice, rejoice not, O Israel, for joy, as other people. I mean, other people have a joy of the world and joy of entertainment and joy. Israel is in deep trouble with God, and they are enjoying their sin. The church today. God says you make me sick, you, you, you're vile, you're everything you say that you're not. And we're happy. For thou hast gone a whoring, there's that word again, after other gods. They've gone a whoring from thy God. Thou hast loved a reward upon every corn floor. The corn floor is, is, is corn in the Bible is not the corn you think of as our corn. It's wheat. This is the threshing floor. The floor, the threshing floor, and the wine press, that's where the grapes go and they make the wine, shall not feed them. And the new wine shall fail in her. Now the Bible says, Study and show thyself, but prove unto God a workman that needs not to be shamed. Rightly divine the word of truth. If you if you just read about okay, I'm done. I did my writing. I ah, did my three words, three chapters. I'm done. You just missed a vital important fact right there. What God just told you. This is what you call suka, suka. Forgive me for saying it wrong. This is a feast of tabernacles. The feast of the Passover is the barley harvest, the Book of Ruth. The feast of the gathering of the wheat is the feast of tabernacles. Look at 1 Kings. 1 Kings 8. Now remember, as you turn to 1 Kings, Israel North is not following the feast of Israel corporate as a complete body under the law. You see, Israel norm is like the church. We got Easter, we call we call the Resurrection Sunday. And we got the the, the, the Christmas, which we call Jesus' birthday, and it's not. The church is following Israel North. But in I'm in Samuel. First Kings, how did I get there? First Kings, eight two. Should have read that. Six two. Oh, I have a hard time. Eight two. And all the men in Israel assembled themselves unto King Solomon at the feast of the month of Ethanim, which is the seventh month. The temple is finished. The ark has been brought into the temple. That's the Feast of Tabernacles. And if you do a study of the Feast of Tabernacles, this is the feast that has seven days and then an eighth day. And when a male child is born on the eighth day, you are to bring him to the priest and he's to be circumcised and named. If you're going to choose any time of the Bible for Jesus to be born, it would be the time of the Feast of Tabernacles, which the temple was finished, where Jesus is brought and circumcised and named, and Simeon and Anna. Thirteen years old, we find Jesus at the temple. And in other places we'll come up to, hopefully, Lord willing, that in the millennium, there's one feast that says, if you don't show up, you're not going to get rain. I wonder what feast that is. Everybody should show up at this feast and have a grand celebration. You mean like a birthday? You can't find Christmas in December 25th anywhere in the Bible. Back to Hosea. 
You know, if you want to revive, you got to get rid of the paganism. That's just plain and simple, Hosea. Hosea chapter 9. So Hosea 9, we are looking at what would be in Jerusalem, the Feast of Tabernacles. Now remember, Jeroboam has come in and has his own feast, his own priest, his own celebration, the Catholic Church. The Baptist Church today has their own feast, has their own celebrations. The Baptist Catholic Church. Resurrection Sunday. And then they celebrate Good Friday. You can't get the three. I wish you'd get off Easter. Hey, I'm just trying to preach the truth. You don't like it. All right, so they shall not dwell in the Lord's land. Israel's going bye bye. Assyria's going to come in. Judah's going to go bye bye. Babylon's going to go. Now, Judah will come back under Nehemiah and Ezra, or Ezra and Nehemiah. Israel does not return. Not one king in Israel ever done right. They got worse, 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 worse. Now, Judah has some good kings. And if you want a revival in America, you better look at Jer Jeroboam in the south, Judah, Asa and all that. I mean, they got rid of the Sodomites. They got rid of the idolatry. They got rid of all, all, the, all the heathenism. And they had a revival. But you're not going to do that in the church. Not when you go to, you know, Pastor, that, that's, it's, it's paganism. Well, I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. Okay, fine. Pray for the revival all you want. You ain't going to get it. Israel doesn't get it because they don't clean up. Judah gets revivals because they clean up. God says, you're leaving. Jeremiah told Judah, you're leaving. But Ephraim shall return to Egypt where God told him not to go. Why would God tell and send Israel to where God told them not? Because they're already there. Solomon broke that. He sends them in for horses and yarn. Yarn. I'm going to break the law for yarn. And they shall eat unclean things. Pork. Seafood. In Assyria. That's where they go into captivity. That's where Jonah goes and preaches and the whole entire city got right. Angry preacher went in preaching an angry message and everybody, including the animals, got in sackcloth and said, God, please save us. That's a revival. You ain't going to see America do that. You ain't going to see the church in America do that. Then... They shall not offer wine offerings to the Lord. That's a drink offering. Now remember again, when we're reading about Israel, we're not reading about the law. Jeroboam has come up with his religion. There's two things going on like the church today. and I'm comparing it to what the church is today. There's the right way to law in Jerusalem. There's a wrong way going on in Israel. Now, they may have the same materials, but, you know, the Catholic Church has bread and wine for their Lord's Supper. The Protestants have bread and wine for their Lord's Supper, but they actually say that's the literal body and blood of Jesus. I don't say that. Christians don't say that. And now Baptist churches, you got some that they'll use grape juice. Some will use intoxicating liquor. Some will say, well, if you're not a member of our church, you can't partake. Some will fool around with the Lord's Supper. Well, have the Lord, before the Lord's Supper, all right, can we sing 484? We never sang it before, but can we sing it? We didn't know what it was. <laughs> you got some churches before the Lord's Supper, they will not warn the people. This is a very serious thing that Paul says you could die, you could become sick. There's a difference between Israel and there's a difference between Judah. 
neither shall they be pleasing unto me. <laughs> what? So we're going to do something. Okay? We're going to do something in the name of God. And God says, I ain't pleased. We're going to go to the Old Testament and look at tithing as I force our church to tithe. And God says, I ain't accepting it. Tithe all you want. If you got a, if you got a wrong spirit, you got a wrong heart, you're being forced to do it against what Paul said. Do all you want. I'm not thinking it. There are people, they go to church or twice a year. <laughs> you mean I'm to honor you to go to church twice a year when that one there sitting in the people, he's sick, he'll come to church. He won't come to church unless he's really, really sick. Or he won't go to church because it's a pagan festival. Or he's in church, you know, Lord, look at this mess is going on. I love you, Lord. I'm here for you, Lord. But he's going to bless the man that shows up twice a year. Their sacrifice shall be unto them as the bread of mourners. Sad. A funeral. God says, your offering, your giving, your sacrifice to me is like a bunch of dead people at a funeral. Or the visitors at a funeral. You know what they do today with the funeral? It's expression of, you know, they make it a great celebration. Hey, he's going all right, party up! I, I, I played for a job for, for a funeral play, and they, and they're the, you know, we had we had balloons, we had a, you know, all this kind of I'm like, you're sick. You're calling evil good and good and evil. Call, hey, hey. All that eat thereof shall be polluted. Well, this. Listen, listen to me. If you want a, a biblical definition of today's food, there it is. The food of America ain't food, it's chemicals. And the doctor's going to tell me as a diver, you got to eat healthy. You got to be kidding. Where? Well, you know, you got to go to the store and get organic. It says organic, it ain't organic. I, I, I don't like to. Probably the doctor's gonna say stop it, but I don't like to eat breakfast, so I get those nutritious shakes or the or the uh, the, the protein shakes I get, and, or the diet shake. And so, and when you look at the you look at the ingredients, like all right, it's got vitamins, it's got minerals, it's got and then this is a chemical swamp. All the eat there shall be polluted. Uh, 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 <laughs> Our food in America today is polluted. You get a can of tuna fish, and it's been polluted by mercury. It's so funny. Way back when, when, when you know, and they always said they go out there to go shoot. And went, hey, you want to go shoot and all that? They would use lead balls to shoot the game. They would put lead piping in houses, but then they found out, well, lead is poisonous. For their bread, for their soul. They ain't bread for, you, for your material, but for your soul shall not come into the house of the Lord. Remember, the house of the Lord is not the temple. We're in Israel. This is the house of the golden calves. This is the chicken house you go after you go to church. Because people in church, we say, I wish you'd hurry up because I'm going to go to the chicken house. I don't know. My heart's at the chicken house right now. And God says, well, you're going to bring bread for the soul. You want a feeding. And it's not going to happen in what you call the house of the Lord, what you call the church, which is not the church. Because it's a false religion, you're not going to be fed. Brother, do, do I see that? In today's church. What will you do in a solemn day, a, a day set apart, a holiday, they, they call it. Though it's supposed to be a holy, up north it's called a holiday, in Jerusalem it's called a holy day. In the day of the feast of the Lord. 
Now, they're not celebrating the Feast of the Lord. They're celebrating Jeroboam's feast, the pagan feast. There are feasts been prescribed by God in the law. Now, some in Israel, they're, they're, I guarantee you, the three times a year, they are actually going to Jerusalem. They're doing right. But not the majority. All right? The days of visitation are come. You say, well, it's not like you skip verse 6. Yeah, because you, you Baptists don't want me to do verse 6. You, you you want me to you don't want me to kick your God. And I'm going to do verse six and I'm going to kick your God. I'm going to put my big boots on and I'm going to kick with the boots of a soldier in armor. And you're not going to like it. And my attitude is I don't care. That's why you hate me. For lo. They're gone because of destruction. That's Israel. Bye. And it happened. Gad, Reuben, and the half-tribe Manasseh go into captivity first. They're on the wrong side. That's religion. Israel will go into captivity next. That's, a, you know, we're the right people, but we're doing it the wrong way. And then Judah goes, they're the right people, but they incorporated themselves into the world, all are welcome, come on in. We got the Queen of Heaven. We did Jeremiah. He said, oh, Sally, you, you, you have, hold on, hold on. Put your seatbelt on. Egypt shall gather them up. Now, he already told them they're going to Egypt. Even though the law says, you don't go. Egypt is a type of the world. Egypt is what God redeemed his people out by the blood of the Lamb and the Passover. Don't go back to Egypt. Christian, do not go back into the world. When I was in the, in the jailhouse ministry, in the prison ministry, and somebody said to me, it's not like, I'm going home, and I'm, I'd be like, don't go back to your people. I got in trouble for saying that. I got kicked out of a jail for saying that. The people that got you in this place, you don't go, I don't care if it's your mother, you don't go back to them. You get yourself in a Bible-believing church, I got kicked out of prison for that. And you get yourself away from your sin, you get right, you do right, you're a new creature, you're a new man, a new bird. I got kicked out of prison for saying that. Alright, don't go back to Egypt. Twice in the Bible it says, come out. Egypt shall go. All right, so e you're going to Egypt. You're not supposed to be going there, but go. Memphis. Oh, yeehaw, Memphis, Tennessee. Woo! Ooh, football, football. Ooh, Elvis, Memphis, Dolly Parton. Woo! We're going to go to Memphis. We're going to go to Tennessee. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Shishku, bum. Tennessee! Roll down the crowd. I know you can't see this on Facebook. But if you watch the video, roll this down. Roll. Oh, look at this. Smith Bible Dictionary, Memphis. Roll down a little more. Bye, Styling. Memphis, a haven of the good. Ooh, that sounds good. That's Memphis. Ooh, ooh. Gotta get me some Memphis. Ooh, my football team. Ooh, ha-ha, uh ha-ha. -huh, uh -huh. Elvis, woo. Elvis is saved. He sung some, some hymns. He did a gospel of Dolly Parton. Woo! A city of ancient Egypt. Situated on the west bank of the Nile, about nine miles south of Cairo, five Five from the Great Pyramids and the Sphinx. Now, if God told his people not to go in the world, you don't need to go to Tennessee. You don't need to go to Memphis. Memphis, Tennessee is named for a place in the Bible of Egypt and the Sphinx and the Pyramid. You think God wants you there? Do you think because Elvis Presley ain't nothing but a hound dog did a gospel, did a, did a couple hymns, shoots his car with a web, with, with a gun, messes around with women, dies of overdose of alcohol and drugs and all that. You didn't really think that's a thing for a Christian to be? 
get Christians. We're going to go to Dolly World. We're going to we're going to visit the estate of, of Presley. We're going to go to the country west. We're going to Opryland. We're going to go see the Ark. God says, "Come out." You know, we only go we, we only go to church twice a year, but we're going to go to Tennessee. We're going to root for the Tennessees. God told his people, because you sin, because you're a whoredom, I'll send you to Memphis. How's that? Memphis is a place where, hey, you want to do wrong? Bye! And what do Christians do? Tennessee, Tennessee, woo-woo, Memphis. Yeah, I know where your heart is. And you're mad at me, you hate me, and I'm woo. I know a preacher only put a tie on his orange tie for his team. I don't care. You don't like it? I'll name your name. I'm tired. I'm going to start naming names. I'm going to start calling them out. Paul did it. Jesus did it. Peter did it. Moses did it. The present places for their silver. Ooh, look, look, look at the money. Ooh, we can make all kinds of money. We can have all kinds of things. Maybe. Ooh. Nettles, that's a weed. I don't mean pot. Shall possess them. Thorns, uh, yeah, that's those things that, ow. <laughs> Shall be in their tabernacle. So when they leave Israel, go back to Egypt, go, go and go visit Memphis, the best places they had, they built with their silver. Oh, our homes. It's going to be a ghost town. Weeds are over going to come in Israel. The days of visitation, eh, you know, we call it going out soul winning. We call out, we call uh, visitation. We got visitation night. Uh, that's not the word for the Bible. Visitation in the Bible is God's going to put the hammer down. God's going to judge. Maybe a couple places visitation is good. But primary, somebody has not read their Bible when they say we're going to visitation. Isn't that sad? So when he's in the Bible, Proverbs, he that win his souls is wise. How about that one? The days of visitation are coming. God says, okay, Israel, you know what? I'm coming to town. You better watch out. You better not pop. I'm telling you why. Two angels are coming to town. And they're going to have hail and fire and brimstone. They're going to destroy your sodomy. Lot and his family going to get out. The Morton girl will be left behind. You don't want God to come and visit your area. You don't want God to come into your town. Because when God comes into town, that's it. Well, let us go see that tower. Come on, come on, Jesus. Come on, Holy Spirit. Let's go check out that tower down there. And then everyone had to press one for English. The days of recompense are come. Woohoo. You don't want that. That's the day of judgment. That, uh, that's the great white throne judgment where, you know, hey, okay, let's open up the books. So let's, you know, let's compare you to Jesus. That's the day of the judgment seat of Christ for the Christian. Let's see what you did and how and why you did it. Israel shall know it. <laughs> know what? The day that God shows up. You know, the Sodomites and the, and the Gomorrahites, whatever you call them, and the neighbors, you know, they realized the day that the Lord showed up because they ended up in hell. And they're in hell today. That, oh, I can't think of it. That, that, that volcano that, that, that blew up, and I mean, people were froze to death in ashes. They had found archaeologists, found, I forget what this is. I mean, there'd there, be a woman, she's knee and dough, and she's forever frozen knee. They found people in sexual positions, perverted sexual positions. They found a guy working in, in a city street or something, and he's frozen in that position. They found people running, frozen in that position. They found out God, the judge, has come to town. You're going to know it at, at whatever judgment you go to, save their loss. The prophet is a fool. 
Oh, that's kind of cruel. <laughs> we we got to get a Bible and change that. Now, is Hosea the fool? No. Israel's prophet is a fool. Not God's. In Jeremiah's time, they had the false prophets. We talked about that. They're fools. The one that grabbed the yokes of Jeremiah and broke them. Well, let's see what the whole thing is. He ended up dead. There are people today that get up in a pulpit of a religion or a podium of a religion and they're fools. And they fool the people. They deceive the people. The Bible says a man that says in his heart there's no God. He's a fool. And he teaches evolution. That's a fool. The spiritual man is mad. That's and man, he's blind. He's just gone. You're crazy. For the multitude of thine iniquity sins and a great hatred. Hey, 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 hey. That coming to this time in the world right now. I hate what you said about me. I hate what you say about my people. I hate that you don't hate that. I hate that you hate this. I hate that. I hate that. You hate this. I hate that. I hate what you hate and we all hate. And you're going to get mad at me and we'll put your anger management class. I hate that you turn your signal light and cut me off. Bang, bang, bang. The watchman of Ephraim, that's Israel. I mean, what you're supposed to be looking out and make sure the enemy's not coming. Was with my God. I guess Israel had another God. So there's a man in Ephraim. He is with the God of Hosea. Who's telling Hosea to say what I'm telling you to say. So it's right. But the prophet is a snare of the follower of all his way. Here's a man. He's right. He's saying right. He's doing right. But here's his prophet. Oh, he don't know what he's talking about. Oh, come on. There's nothing wrong with Easter. There's nothing wrong with Christmas. I mean, after all, I mean, we, yeah, okay, but we're doing it for Jesus. The toilet paper you give to the church, you're giving it to Jesus like Jesus needs toilet paper or copy of paper. I mean, Jesus is up in heaven right now. Oh, Michael, you want to have him get some Xerox machines down in heaven? We need more toner. By the way, you want to have a good little extra glass cleaner in, in my Christmas present? Because, you know, that, see, the glass is getting a little filthy there. Yeah, right, sure. Uh-huh. I'm only trying to make you sound how stupid you are. Oh, I'm not supposed to say stupid, dumb. But I can't say dumb because dumb is you don't get it. In the Bible, you're unable to speak. You hate my way. A follower is a person that traps. And hatred, oh boy, there is, in the house of, of his God. You go to church in Israel and there's hating. I hate that person again. Well, I don't like that person. I don't like how she plays the piano. Yeah. I hate people that sin. I hate people that deceive other people. There have been Christians in my life, you know, we just do not get along. We rub, whatever it is, we just rub differently. I don't hate them, I pray for them. I don't want to be with them, I don't want to be around them, but I pray for them. There are actually people in a church house, in a Christian Baptist church, and they hate, and I hate that person. I can't believe every fellowship that they bring. I hate that what they bring. What do you bring? I don't bring love. They have deeply corrupted themselves. This is up north. This is where our read Revelation three. If you're into our Bible study, we are now in the we're coming up to the King James Bible. We are in the Philadelphia church age right now. We're talking about the the, the 
Catholic Church battling the Church of England, battling with, with the Puritan, and we're looking at how what God's doing between the three. The Catholic Church is, is corrupting themselves, and that corruption is going into the Baptist Church. And the, and, the, and the preacher don't see it. The Sunday school don't see it. And I say, have you ever been in a, in a Catholic church? Well, no. Friend, I grew up 16 years as a Polish Roman Catholic. Will you listen to me? I still smell that awful, rotten Catholic incense. I can't get that smell out of my head. You know, it, it, it amazes me, these Baptist churches, I know, they got this special seat up in the pulpit for the pastor to sit in. Now, I can only think about the passage in, the Re in Revelation, and it's talking about the church period, two places where Satan's seated. A couple of pastors did the passage. Listen, I'm bringing Hosea history, and I'm bringing it up to date in the church age. As in the days of Gibeah, and go back and study that, I'll, I'll give it to you to do. Therefore, he will remember their iniquity. You don't want God to do that. Now, let me tell you something. I'm not going to spell it out. But before I was saved, April 24th, 1987, if I would tell you the things I've done in detail, You would turn off this video and you would call the police. Now, I don't even know if some of those things, uh, what do you call it, uh, if they still could charge me. What's it where time runs out? I forget what the name of that is. I don't know. I probably could still be charged. There are some wicked and vile, and if, I, if you would have, know about my thoughts, you turn off this thing and say, hey, I don't know. Way. Wow. You got to be kidding. I thank God, April 24th, 1987, when I met the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe in the Lord Jesus. All them sins. I confessed those sins, and, G and God cleansed and forgave me those sins. They're not coming back. I thank God. There are people at the great white throne judgment, and even the judgment seat of Christ for some. Now listen, there are going to be sins of mine at the, at the judgment seat of Christ. They're going to come back. Because they're not under the blood. If you're lost in the great white throne judgment, every single sin you've done, every single sin you thought of, everything you did that was wicked, it'll be played out for all the world. Everybody. You don't want God to remember your iniquity. There's only one way for God not to remember your iniquity, to forget your sin, is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and put him under the blood and confess your sins to God, to Jesus, through the blood. Never mind a priest. He will visit their sin. Can we please go back up to verse 7? So we got visitation night. We're going to go out visit. What are you doing? Are you going to those people's houses to bring back their sins? Well, you know, we went to his house. He won't believe the stuff they were watching the television, the stuff they had up on the walls, and, and, and you know what, how she was dressed and all that. What are you doing? Bringing up their sins. <laughs> I've seen it. I found Israel like grapes in the wilderness. You know, that's like, I, I can tell you exactly what that's right. When I grew up in New London, Connecticut, our next door neighbor, she was an elderly woman, had a nurse took care of her for the rest of her life. And in her backyard, every spring and summer, oh, grapes. Purple grapes, and oh, they smell so great. Now, numbskull styly that I am. You see, you know, if you do something, 
and keep doing it and think that it's going to get better. It's going to work out. That's called stupid. Stupid styling. Every year would go into that grave and grab grapes and start eating and would and every year they're going to be bitter. They're going to be terrible. You're going to spit them out. You can't enjoy those grapes. And I swear that that taste stays in your mouth for a week. You can swallow gasoline and diesel. Hey, you still got those sour. Oh, man. And your eyeballs say, oh, that looks good. And your, your mouth says, attention brain. Yes. You wouldn't tell those eyeballs stop looking at that because hey, it's terrible. Ooh, yummy. I mean, almost like Adam and Eve in the garden. Look at the tree and the, and the knowledge of good and evil. Ooh. I saw your father as the first right in the fig tree of her first time. Fig tree pictures self righteous because when Adam sinned and Eve sinned, what did they do to cover their sin? They got fig leaves. I can only, I don't want to be disgusting, but no. They sow fig leaves. That pictures self righteous because that was not. There was no shedding of blood. There was no lamb that God killed to cover them. Remember, God clothed them afterwards. And I would figure it would be a lamb. But they went to Baal, 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 Baal. Catholic, I mean, the the, the Baptist church, they go to Tamu, Tamu, Tamu. They go to Estar, Estar, Estar. Bel Peor. You, you recognize that name? That's the God that they ate and drank to under Balaam. You know the talking ass? That's the same God. There he is. They resurrected that God. I thought they got rid of that God. You know, where, 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 where this Israelite and this woman, they're running maybe half naked, and, and Phineas takes that spear and goes right to their belly. Remember that? There's that God. Lord Pierre. That's what Baal means, Lord Pierre. And separate themselves un unto their shame. You know, we belong to the Baal Peor. You know, there's so many different variations of the Baptists. And their abominations were according as they loved. <laughs> oh, there's a church. We love Easter, so we'll keep it. It's an abomination. When we lived in Port Orange, there was a church right around the corner. I forget what, what that denomination was. doesn't matter. And they would have the Easter hunt. What on earth does that have to do with the resurrection? And don't you realize, all right, you're, you're, you're putting eggs away and you're sending the kids after it. You're calling your children sperm. Here's sperm, go find the egg. <laughs> Sexual perversion. And they love it. You know, the worst thing for sin is, I like it. That's what I've had Christians and pastors tell me about when I tell them, you know, that's wrong. I like it. It's not doing us no harm. I never have, but I wonder if his cyanide has a good taste to it. I like it. Don't drink it. Because it's poisonous. As for Ephraim, that's North, their glory, their, 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 look who we are. Shall fly away as a bird, like a bird. <laughs> you know all this thing about America. God bless America. How great we are, America, from sea to sunny sea, even though it's an ocean. One day it's going to be like, well, what's America? Uh, we're going to be in the streets of New Jerusalem. Jesus, where's where, where's old glory? <laughs> what? What's that? 
from the birth and from the womb and from conception. <laughs> Look at that, that's backwards. <laughs> you know that? That's backwards. That's reverse. Though they bring up their children, raise children, yet will I bereave them. I'm going I'm to kill them. I'm going to get rid of them. America right now, how many years have we allowed abortion? I couldn't remember what name of it. Huh? How many years has it been legal for a woman to go in and have her baby aborted? And now we've got this whole thing of Roe versus Way and all that. And then God says, you know what? Baby formula. Turn it off. Uh, well, where's all the baby form? Why would you care? Sodomites don't make babies. Well, I need, I need formula for my baby. You've been killing them. Isn't it? We bring up this Roe versus way, and, and we get all this thing with abortion, and God says, okay, formula, turn it off. Man, we haven't got over people wearing masks for COVID. They're still wearing, they, I mean, they tell, COVID's all done. And why are we still wearing a mask? Why is it certain doctor's office, they hand me a mask? That there shall not be a man left. That's a tribulation passage. You know, you read places in the Bible about the tribulation. It says, it says what was it, seven or ten women are going to say to one man, Hey, can we be called by your life? Hey, listen, we'll make our own bread. We'll take care of our own. We'll work for our own wealth. But we want to be, We want to have a man. We want to be Mormons. Can all those women be married to you? Woe also to them when I depart from them. Well, does that God's gonna say bye? See you later. We well, God, God, I ain't listening. You know what's the saddest point in the book of Jeremiah when <coughs> Jeremiah is praying for his people, Jew. Remember, Jeremiah was a priest, proper man to be praying. And God says, Jeremiah, yeah, stop it. Stop what? Don't pray for him. You remember Jeremiah? I said. You are in trouble when God says, don't pray for you? You know, you ever, you ever be somewhere, whatever you're doing, I mean, I don't care where you're, you ever be, and then somewhere, that one name pops in your head, it's like, wow, I haven't thought about that person in years. Well, Lord God, I know what, I want to pray for that person. Whatever reason why you put that person in my head right now, I pray for it. Whatever it is, Lord, I don't know. I'm going to lift them up in prayer. God said, to told Jeremiah, and here we are. You're not even going to think of their name. You're not even going to remember their name. Ephraim, as I saw, Tyrus. Tyrus is destroyed. Tyrus is going to be gone. There's nothing left but Tyrus. It's planted in a pleasant place, Ezekiel 28. It's such a pleasant place that when it comes, God likens the king of Tyrus to the devil. But Ephraim shall bring forth his children to the murderer. Uh, that's a tribulation passage of the Antichrist. <laughs> woe be to the women that, uh, that, that give suck. Woe be to the women that be pray. And listen, listen, listen. In the tribulation period, if you're pregnant... You're not going to go to the hospital for, for a pregnancy if, you know, unless you got the mark. You're not going to get no formula unless you got the mark. God's preparing you. God wants you to repent. God wants you to get right. You know, there'll be formula in the tribulation period. You're not going to be able to get it unless you take that mark. Now, murderer, I don't, you know, listen, Assyria is going to come in, okay? North Israel. Babylon for Judah. Now, that's not a murderer. That's God calling in a military. God allows an army. God allows war to cite what the Jehovah Witnesses say. 
Now, when Joab and and I forget what the uh, King Saul's family that, but when they sit there and said they had the war games, let us fight, and they fought back and forth. They had a civil war. That was allowed. That was a war. But when Joab killed, I think it was Asa, and I forget the name, apologize, because Asa killed his brother, Joab's brother, while in battle. And Joab killed him, not in war. Joab was Joab murdered three people, not in war. And he was counted as a murderer beside all the people he killed in battle. Murder is different from battle. Murder is different from Assyria coming. According to the Bible. How many people did David kill in battle? He killed Goliath. Unless you got a modern Bible. Alright. But he murdered Uriah. So this children to the murder is not an invasion army. Give them, O Lord, what will thou give? That's, give them, that's weird. Give them miscarrying womb and dry breasts. Stillborn. That's what America is going to get in the future with all this murder and abortions. Dry breath. You know, sodomy. Sodomies don't produce children. America's population is going to be delinquished because you murdered babies in the womb. Great. That murder is a murder. And you allow sodomites to be legalized, they don't make children. Dry breasts. That was Sarah. 89 years old. I think I think Hebrew says or Paul Hebrews or Paul writes about her being dead. In other words, she can't have children. Everything to do with Sarah for children, it did. She's an old lady, she ain't gonna have children. And God revived her womb. And listen, I think it was her somewhere it says. They're going to look upon me. I'm going to give child suck. <laughs> when she gets birth and she's in the pregnancy of Isaac and gives birth to Isaac, them old breasts are no longer dry. Because they said when, when Isaac was weaned, Abraham had a celebration. You know, the Bible didn't celebrate birthdays. They celebrate, all right, he's eating solid food. Hallelujah. Give him some mush. <laughs> The Baptist got it all wrong. Miscarrying womb is death. Dry breast, no light, no milk. That's what some of your Baptist churches are. They're dry breasts. They don't give you the milk of the word. There has been a new birth in that church in a long time. Oh, there have been people that said a prayer. Ooh, that was one. All their wickedness is in Gil Gilgal. <laughs> and there I, God speaking, said, hated them. Ooh. My God is love. My God hates. For the wickedness of their doing. There are things that God's people do. God says, I hate that. What's God say about the Baptist Church? Your your Esther, your Tamus. I hate that. I wish you listened to that guy talking to you. I wish you listened. Uh, you don't call him an idiot. He knows what he's talking about because he's talking from the Spirit of God. When he tells you the King James Bible is the King James Bible, King James only and only King James. You better listen to that boy because he's gonna be up in heaven one day and he's gonna knock you in the head. He's gonna give you a King James Bible. He's gonna say that's the Word of God. Then he's going to take you in a room in a portal of heaven. He's going to teach you the King James Bible. I don't know. That'd be nice. I will drive them out of my house. 
That's the one down in Jerusalem. There are people who are doing right. But you know what happens to those that do right? They suffer for the ones that do wrong. There are people who love the Lord. They wanted to do right. They do do right. And you know what? Because of judgment upon sin, COVID shut their church down. There are Christians today, they're King James, they love the Lord, they're so winners, and there's no King James Bible churches for them. And there are King James Bible, they've been perverted. They've been. I will love them no more. Ooh, that's God speaking. All their princes are revolters, they're just wicked against God. They're just sinning. Open sin. They're out in the streets. Gay pride. God loves them. God says, no, I don't. All are welcome. Oh, not here. You know what all are welcome in the churches? Is everybody's going to be saved. That ain't a fact, Jack. Yo, Phyllis, Fred, Tom. Ephraim is smitten. That's the judgment. That's the visitation. Their root is dried up. They ain't going to have no more fruit. They ain't going to have no more limbs. And Jesus said, Wherefore by their fruit you should know them. And you ain't got no fruit. Guess what you are? You're dead. They shall bear no fruit. You're supposed to. A Christian is supposed to bear fruit. If you don't bear fruit, at least one fruit. There's something wrong with your tree. Yea, though they were, though they bring forth, okay, they did have fruit. Yet will I slay even the beloved fruit of their womb. I'm going to kill their children. You think your sin doesn't affect others? There are babies today. And there are nurses and doctors in tears today. Because that baby will be born from the womb and that baby's addicted to heroin. That baby's been addicted to cocaine. That baby's addicted to the hard drugs that mama did while that baby was in the womb. That baby suffers for your sins. Your children suffer for your sins. They may not be able to get something from first or second or third grade because daddy spent the money on, on bottle of booze. Mama, if I get this, they're going to have pictures at, 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 at school. If I, give, I can get pictures with, with the rest of the class in school. I'm sorry. Dad's over there putting it in his arm to the needle. See, Dad, what daddy do that? Me? You know what the fruit of the room today in America is it's right now, today, it's legal to get an abortion. That violates the scripture. It's legal to be a sodomite. That violates the scripture. The church, well, we got Easter. I wish you leave it alone. Well, we got we got Christmas. That violates the scripture. We got NIV, PDQ, all the all boo 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 B I N G O. That violates the scripture. Oh, what a great pastor we have. What about God? My God will cast them away. That's Israel. Israel has never gone back. Because they did not hearken unto him. You don't listen to God. God says, bye. Put a face mask on. Close them doors up. You know what would be the worst thing that will destroy the churches in America? It, it would be biblical, too. Though many Baptists, no! If the government says, all right, you got to tax the churches. <laughs> you can't tax this. Well, why? Jesus paid his taxes. 
Peter, the, the tax, yeah, yeah. All right, go down, catch the fish, got a coin in it, take that coin and pay the taxes. Well, Jesus, are we all to pay taxes? Render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, render unto God that which is God. That George Washington, that Benjamin Franklin, that Thomas Jefferson, that's not the church, that's the governments. Oh, we go right in the Constitution. Oh. That would close. That would close your churches down. Paul said, "Pay your taxes." Peter said, "Pay your taxes." The only place in the Bible where where the the religion was not allowed to pay the taxes, they were exempt, was Pharaoh's priest in Egypt. There we're back in Memphis again. Because they did not hearken unto him, and they shall be wanderers among the nations. You know who's in America today? Jews. You know who's in France today? The Jews. You know who's in Germany today? The Jews. You know who's in England today? The Jews. You know who's in the Ukraine today? The Jews. You know who's in Russia today? The Jews. You know who's in Japan today? The Jews. You know, they're all over. As God said. Why are they all over the world? Because they didn't listen to God. And who's in their homeland? The Arabians and the Catholics. And the dumb Baptists paid the Arabians and Catholics. Oh, we're going to follow the footsteps of Jesus when people who never read their Bible don't believe the Bible. It amazes me every time I hear, oh, we went to the Holy Land, and you won't believe what our guide showed us. The I say, who was your guide? Oh, we had an Arabian. <laughs> I try so hard not to laugh. I even laugh. I, I, I laugh so hard inside. Oh, we had a Catholic show us. <laughs> ah! That's funny. <laughs>